Bonjour and welcome or welcome back to my channel, Crude here. So today I'm very excited about sharing with you my thoughts on Le Tarot des Ambiguïtés by Alejandro Rosan. Um, this is a Tarot de Marseille deck and if you have been on my channel before you'll know that I've got a big soft spot for Tarot de Marseille because when I learned um, how to read Tarot 30 years ago it was with a Tarot de Marseille so I will always have a soft spot for them. This deck is available at artisantarot.com which I'm going to hold up so you can see their um, address and I must say this is a gem an absolute gem. So it comes with a link to a Zoom interview with Alejandro where you find out about his background um, and how he created this beautiful deck. It's a very interesting um, interview um, which is led by the people from Artisan Tarot and it also comes with three um, little postcards which I'm going to show you now. They're very cute. They're like squarish and this is how they look in the back. So you've got this one, you've got this one, and this one. So there's that. They make really um, good bookmarks actually if you want to be selfish and keep them to yourself. <laughs> Um, so this is what it comes with. It doesn't have a little white book or anything like that. Um, this is a collaboration with Stephen Bright, who I believe is the person writing the book, and there will be a proper book to, to buy with this deck, which will be available separately on the website. Now, um, Alejandro is of Cuban origin, he was born and raised there, and in Cuba they obviously do not have you know, the abundance of things that we have. And so he was uh, exposed primarily to the Tarot de Marseille type of decks, which is why, from his own admission, he probably was drawn to create a Tarot de Marseille style, type deck as opposed to a Rider Waite Smith. But um, he has been um, interested in tarots for years and it's taken him a lot of time to do that. It's all hand drawn. Um, it really is a beautiful deck. It is based on the Noble Tarot de Marseille, the Convert and the Vieville Tarot de Marseille, which excited me right from the offset because my favorite Tarot de Marseille is the Vieville, which I have here. Um, so obviously, um, already that ticked a box for me. Now, the title comes from the ambiguity of the artwork um, that he has used to illustrate it. So Tarot des Ambiguities is obviously the Tarot of Ambiguities. So that's why he came up with this title. Now, the deck logo, which is right here, I'm going to show it up close. This is very interesting. You have a flower, which is the white ginger lily, or in Cuban, it is called the white butterfly flower. And during the war, the women used it to convey messages in their hair. So this has a, a, a strong importance to the creator. The hand you see here is his own hand. The blood that you see around here is a reference to the... Um, Noble, sorry, Noble Tarot. And um, the final thing I wanted to talk to you about was the caterpillar, which represents um, transformation. And there's also uh, the worm. Now, the worm is another um, reference because in Cuban it's a reference of being against the government. So, this is him. Uh, sending a strong message right in the front of his deck because the people from Artisan Tarot have helped him move from Cuba to uh, the United States. Um, and it's not easy to leave Cuba. But if you're interested in all of that, you can watch the Zoom interview um, with Alejandro if you get the deck. It's very, very interesting. Makes you um, appreciate even more um, how much this deck means to him. It, it's, it's really, it's beautiful. So this has a vintage vibe. I'm, can, I'm sure you can see from the box already that it does. Um, it looks like, you know, vintage paper. Um, and if you look at that, you can see the colors are inverted. So the back of the cards and, and the box, um, they're a nod to uh, Noble and Vieville, the Noble Tarot has that as well, but he's inverted the colors. So this is all in a bit to give it this vintage look, you know, keeping the style but changing it a bit. And in order to get this kind of um, aspect, he spilled coffee on the paper. So it, it was done, you know, really by hand. It's, um, it's, it's really, I think I find it inspiring anyway. So let me open the box so you get, you know, a, a, a tuck box, normal tuck box. The other thing I wanted to tell you, and that's because I'm French, so obviously these things matter to me, but 
he chose to keep all of the titles in French because Tarot de Marseille by tradition is written in French, obviously, and even down to details such as, you see here, this is a V rather than a U, and that's because in, because in Old French the V replaced the U. So it is still read uh, ambiguity, but he kept even the old, older style of letters, and to me as a French person it means a lot. It's that attention to detail which I love. So, when you open it, you get those two title cards. So you have the first one here, which um, Artisan Tarot, thank you for your purchase. May these cards inspire your reading and then their website. And then you get this card here, which I'm going to read to you. So, the Tarot des Ambiguités is a reimagination of the Tarot de Marseille, faithful to its style and inspired by its symbolism. A vibrant narrative emerges from its evocative art, hand-drawn by Alejandro R. Rosan in Cuba. Details of this original deck are explored in Tarot Shapeshifter, its guidebook, written by Stephen Bright in the VK. Um, as I said, it was not available yet to purchase when I um, bought the deck, but I'll get my hands on it when it is. It probably is now, I don't know. These powerful images were designed to enhance the intuition of seasoned readers and excite newcomers to the rich and evolving tarot tradition. And you can see what I was telling you about, the vintage vibe with the coffee spilling on the background. So these are, are your um, um, title. Now, I absolutely adore this deck. It's a standard side, size. I've, I've got medium um, sized hands, as you can tell. You can see it's got a beautiful slip already, and I will talk to you about that in a minute. The backs, as I said, they're inverted colours. Not chunky at all, but look at that. Look at the edges. Can you see how it is absolutely perfectly aligned? I love that. Now, very very high quality card. It's a linen stock. If you've ever watched any of my videos, you'll know I obsessed over linen. I don't know if you can see in the reflection that it is linen, but I think you can here. I think it's picking it up nicely. So I'm a sucker for that because they are long lasting. They have a beautiful slip. So yeah, this is a deck. I mean, you know, I, I have already worked for two months with it, as I said, and it does not have any sign of damage. It's so beautiful. Um, so, as I said, he was trying to get a really vintage style um, to the deck, but he changed um, the archetypes to create new symbolism. Um, and I'm going to explain this to you as we start looking at the cards. And I'm going to zoom in so you can, you can see a bit better. So give me a second so I can zoom in a bit. Yeah. So, I'll give you an example, because I'm not going to do it for all of them, otherwise we'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> but for instance, Le Ma, you can see how he swapped the animal for um, the human. And that is because this is supposed to represent the uh, unconscious mind that starts the journey, whilst your conscious human mind is trying to hold on, you know, the fear of making the leap. So that's, you know, there's a lot of... Um, inversion. Let me just put it this way. So then we have Le Battleur, which obviously is your magician, and you can see he's got three hands, three legs. There's a leg that's replacing um, the table leg. Then La Papesse, L'Imperatrice, L'Empereur, I mean, can you see the vintage vibe to it? What I love about it is that it looks um, old, not restored, um, but it has that... Um, how can I explain that? It, it looks old and vintage, but not like it's been tampered with. I think he's done an incredible job I, I make, uh, you know, making it look like... Yeah, it's just an old deck. It's really, really good. And the lover, and obviously it's not the lovers because it's not right away Smith, so it's singular. Justice cards, 
again, obviously for the reason it's not um, strength, it's swapped around. Love the fact that Justice is holding a heart and a head because um, Justice brings back harmony. Justice is also about being balanced between your emotions and, and your, your thinking process. Um, and then taking action with the sword. I really like all of that. I think he's done a great job. I love the hermit and the fact that these have been switched. I think that's very, very intelligent. Obviously, all are, these are just my personal views. And, um, you know, feel free to disagree in the um, comment box below. I love talking about tarot. So, La Route Fortune. You see, strength has been inverted as well. You've got the human face here and um, the beast above. And I like that because it talks to the, um, it, to me anyway, it represents the taming your inner beast as well, which is one of the meanings of the uh, Force card. Le Pendu, the, the hangman. Death. Temperance. The Devil. La Maison Dieu, obviously your tower. L'Etoile, which is written in Old French. I love the fact that L'Etoile has become, is, is there for all to see. This is the main aspect of the card. And the head is in the water. La Lune, for the moon. Le Soleil, for the sun. Le Jugement. Notice the absence of a head for the um, angel. And le monde for um, the world. Now, the four suits, he has changed them a bit. So, as you can tell already, for here, this is the sword suit, which um, in French is l'épée. And the way he's dealt with that is he's um, changed it into the suit of the arms. Um, which is called le bras in French. So you've got your ace there with the, you know, the crown. You recognize the symbolism. You see the sword here, but it's le bras, the arm. And if you look, you have, they look like arms all the way because you've got hands. So obviously this is your two of swords. But the hands are everywhere to um, carry out the theme of the arm. And... Um, this is because the swords are tools, so weapons, like our hands, can be tools or weapons. That's the reason why he chose to do that. So otherwise, he kept, obviously, the tradition uh, pips. And if you would like to be able to read Tarot de Marseille, your pip decks, and you, you feel like you are not um, confident doing it, I have a review on an amazing book. This is the only book really you need for reading all the Tarot decks. And it's by Kathleen Matthews. Um, it's called Untold Tarot, and I'll give you a, a link in the description box below to check out the review, because that will teach you everything you need to know. It makes it very easy. So here we have our page, which is called Valet in French, so Valet de Bras. So that's the page of arms or swords. Love the fact that he's scratching his head because the swords represents the intellect, the thoughts, the ideas. So I really like that. Then we have a cavalier de bras, which obviously is your knight. La reine de bras for the queen. And le roi de bras um, for the king. And even spelt in the old French way because it, normally it's an I, but it's put a Y, which is um, old French. So then we move on to the second suit, which, as you can see just by looking at it, is the wands. And he's, look, he's used the um, legs for this. And it's because the wands are connected to the ground, um, to creation and walking. Also a reference to sexual energy, which is why he chose the uh, legs. So you've got, the obviously, two of wands, but you'll notice that they look like legs, because they've got um, feet. Obviously, I'm going fast because, you know, these are just pips. Kept, you know, the griddle. It looks exactly like a Tarot de Marseille, but with enough novelty to 
I don't know, it, it really it inspires me, I, I love it. So when you've got your page of wands, holding the wand the same way, but it's a leg, your knight of wands, the queen of wands, you recognize you know, what the queen of wands looks like normally, but with um, a leg, and notice that her leg has a shoe, and same as the, um, the king, if you look at it, there's a shoe on those legs, whereas with the page and the knight, you don't. This is, these are the only two cards that have a shoe. Which obviously, in my mind, I'm assuming, shows that you're at the top level of the, the suit. Then we move on to um, the cups. Now, the cups are represented by hearts, so they are called um, le coeur in French. And this is a straight um, reference to the French playing cards because tarot has evolved from um, playing cards. And you know, you had the traditional suits like um, spades and diamonds and hearts. So he chose hearts for that reason, which, as I said, is coeur in French. So you've got your um, two of, of hearts, or le deux des coeurs. Interesting thing is that the hearts have also different um, vessels and veins. If you look very closely, you could get yourself lost in the symbolism because they're all different. with the, the cup across. So then we have our valet de coeur, so the page holding it in the cup, the knight, the queen, and obviously because the queen of, of um, cups always has a, um, a, a close cup, like a trophy type of thing, the heart has been here and I love how um, you know, you've got the uh, the blood droplets which you have everywhere but it looks like it's linking the heart to the cup love the symbolism of this queen. And then you can see clearly how this moves into this, which is the final step, you know, the culmination of the suit with your king. Then we have the uh, coins. So the coins are heads. And um, the reason why he's done that is because he, uh, he explained it, I'm trying to remember, it connects to the um, the drops of blood connects to the the physical and the color is yellow for coins that's what he said i'm i'm trying to remember exactly why he said that you can clearly see how this all works out all the heads seem to be different as well coins is about also manifestation, you know, using your resources, so probably why the heads is being pragmatic. But notice all the difference, uh, the differences, and you will recognize some of the heads come from the mages. Then you have your page, holding a head instead of a coin, you can see what's going on here. Also looks like it's um, dripping blood into the head that's, that's at the bottom. There's your knight. Oh, sorry, I'm too high. Sorry, did I, did I do that? I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was off camera. Then you've got the, the queen of coins or the queen of heads. I like how it looks like they're having a conversation. And then you've got your king and the coin is here, which is the head. So I think he's done a terrific job. It's been a pleasure to work with this deck for the last two months. Um, I do think that um, it's, it's also a collectible items, to be quite honest with you, but I'm, I'm using it a lot. I think it's good for beginners and for experienced readers. Um, and really, um, all I have to say to him is thank you for creating such a beautiful deck. 
So let me know in the comment box below what your thoughts are about this deck. Do you have it? Are you planning on getting it? Everything is in the description box below um, with the website in order to get it. And as always, I thank you for your time. It's your most precious commodity. I'm truly grateful you chose to spend it with me. I wish you a truly magical day wherever you are on this planet and whenever you're watching this. Until next time, au revoir.